Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. How are you today? Okay, so today's session is uh, some of you have uh, attended the SGC in person. We have the Ask Me Anything. Um, let me let me see the last week's SGC. Uh, there may be some questions. That I, th I think there were some questions that was posted that I was going to address this week. So just give me a minute and I will pull that out. That should be on the 22nd. In the meantime, if you have any questions or anything to uh, share or ask, you can post it. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Ah, okay. Uh, last week, one of you, uh, Ushnisha, asked this question. Um, everything is uncertain. Now it's even more prominent. How do we even then? How do we then be even more prepared for sickness and death? And uh, she also asked further whether I, we can touch, I can touch on the skillful means and ways to share this with our dear ones who may not be Buddhists or do not know the Dharma. Yeah. Uh, that sickness and ha death happens to everyone. How do we get prepared for our losses too? In a sense that while the pain of loss will definitely be there, how can we lessen the suffering stemming from the pain of losing someone? Uh, that's a good question. <coughs> so let me just uh, perhaps uh, repost the question here so that uh, you all can see. This is a <coughs> this is a good question, especially in this time. Uh, I was sharing with uh, with some students the other day about how um, uh, humanity has gone through a lot of uh, a lot of calamity. Uh, some men need some uh, natural disaster and in this case a pandemic a virus infection uh, in all likelihood in all likelihood we will all uh, well, not all of us but uh, humanity will survive this yeah uh, but for those who lose uh, our loved one or even not to mention lose, if our loved one do fall sick to this uh, COVID-19, um, I, I don't think it's easy for anyone to to accept or to face that. Mm. So then how can we be prepared? <coughs> uh, in the Buddhist tradition, there is this, um, there is this practice 
that we call uh, contemplation. Yeah. Uh, in some traditions, it's more uh, strongly highlighted. Yeah. In other traditions, uh, maybe alternative practices are, are used instead. Um, and so, contemplation can be on the various teachings. Can be can be on many things. Yeah. Uh, in the especially in the monastic tradition, there is this pra practice of contemplating on death. Yeah, contemplating on the on old age, sickness, and death. Yeah, yeah. There's this sutta called the the three messen the divine messengers. Yeah, uh, and in the sutta, the Buddha um, speaks of this. This uh, this young man who spent his life and joined himself, and when he passed away, he meet Yama, and Yama questions him whether he's he's seen the divine messengers. The truth is, in our day and age, uh, even without the COVID nineteen, we do face aging, sickness, and death. Uh, it's just that the COVID nineteen has brought it to the forefront. Yeah, uh, shove it into our face, whether we want to think about it or not. It's in the news. Uh, it's in the social media. It has affected our life. <coughs> yeah. Here in Singapore, we we have um, implemented several different levels of measures. So, um, in the the silver lining would be that it it gets us to think about uh, this aspect of life, which is always there, yeah, the transientness, the mortality of our life, which is always there. It's just that uh, <coughs> without COVID nineteen, many times we 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 become complacent in our youth, in our health, yeah. In our very existence, yeah, we, uh, in a way, we become, uh, we indulge in the pride of being young, being healthy, yeah. So we forget, yeah. So, in the Buddhist tradition, in the monastic tradition, there is this practice that every day when you wake up, to do a, a short reflection, yeah. To reflect on how, while we are young, uh, aging is happening as we speak, yeah, and in due time, in due time, uh, we are hit with OH. Mm. And when OH comes, then our faculties become dull. Uh, we are impaired to some degree. Granted, modern science has uh, improved the quality of life for some. Yeah. Uh, but by and large, once you cross past 50 or 60s, then the faculties comparatively tend to be duller. Uh, so the reflection will go to go on to uh, consider how, while we are young, there are those who are already old, but old age is not something that just happened to others. Yeah. Before you know it, we are old. Oh. So to reflect, uh, don't not to think that this youth is a permanent thing. Yeah. Uh, conceptually, intellectually, we all know. Yeah. The fact that you are using, you are watching this on Facebook, or maybe in in due time on YouTube, uh, of course you know, yeah. And if you can understand this uh, talk, then you understand English, and uh, this is not something complicated, yeah, yeah. But it's just intellectually, conceptually. Uh, but to to truly know. Yeah, and appreciate it. Uh, that's that's a bit different. Because what we know, 
we it's not always in the back of our mind. Our decisions are, are not always made with this in mind. Yeah, this is what I mean by uh, to internalize it. Because if you ask anyone the questions, would you one day grow old? Of course, everybody will say yes, of course. If you ask people, is it possible for you to fall sick? Yeah, of course. Will you live forever? Nobody would say yes, I will live forever. Yeah. My teacher always like to joke. Huh? Woman? Woman <laughs> My late ordination teacher, Sang Miao Xia Jing Yeah. Not to mention live forever. Two hundred years. Can you imagine? Of course. Uh, I also hear students who say that no Sifu, I don't even want to live past sixty or sixty-five, you know. Yeah. OH is not necessarily a good thing. Wish me good health. Don't wish me long life. Jiang si jiang jiang uh, in Singapore we say Jiang si jiang jiang, say only uh. But does that translate to our actions? Yeah. In our day to day actions, day to day decisions, yeah. When we think about doing something, saying something, do we think I'm young now, one day I'll grow old. I'm uh, I'm healthy now, one day I may fall sick. Uh, I'm alive now, one day I'll die. Mm. To consider that uh, to that degree, then the way we we uh, act physically, speak or think may change. Yeah, to that extent. Yeah, uh, if we were to reflect in this way, then uh, it will help us. But now the question becomes trickier. Huh? Yeah, if it's just for ourselves, uh, the question: How do we then be even more? prepared for sickness and death. Uh, we can prepare in this way. Now, for some of us, when we hear of this kind of practices and reflection, we may feel like it's quite morbid. Uh. Ah, Sifu, every day think about how we may die. <laughs> then isn't that paranoia? Uh, no, not, it's, it's not paranoia. Uh, reflecting on this is it's not about fearing death. It's not about fearing old age, fearing sickness. It's about seeing clearly that these are realities of life. And it's happening whether you, you think about it or not. Then we may say, then Sifu, don't think lah, Sifu. <laughs> Why are you going to think? Well, the, the, the more we don't think about it, the more we are unaware of it, the more, the bigger surprise when it happens. Imagine you have a field and, and you planted some seeds and the seeds would in turn, given the right conditions, sprout, it would grow into a sapling, then into a plant and eventually if it's the seed of a tree, it would become a tree. Yeah? If you were to check on the, on the seed and uh, the seedling and sapling, if you check regularly, you would observe the gradual changes, yeah, the various stages of its growth. You wouldn't be surprised when you see a tree because you have been seeing the growth, right? But if you don't look at it, in fact, you don't even take a look at your field. And then one day you turn around, wow, there's a forest there. <laughs> or maybe it's a barren land. Nothing developed, nothing grown. Then you're surprised, eh, how come there's nothing there? Or maybe you're surprised, how come there's a durian tree? Eh? I don't have to be surprised. So this practice of frequent contemplation is not meant to be morbid, not meant to be fearful, not meant to be paranoid. Yeah? But um, bringing that awareness to the forefront so that the way we, we act has the reality in mind. Uh, 
the, the challenge is because if you are not used to doing this and then we imagine how it's like and uh, then <laughs> there's a gap uh. Uh, then we may think no lah, sifu, very scary or very tiring every day maybe you don't do it every day lah huh? do it perhaps like you know, a few times a week yeah. maybe twice a week once uh, in the weekend then once more, maybe Wednesday, weekday, yeah, reflect. Uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, <laughs> quite sounds it would sound quite funny if I tell you about this practice, but I tell you that I'm not very good at it. Huh? <laughs> because there was one time uh, I reflected on impermanence. I was in the monastery in the US and when I did the reflection that that day I was doing some extended sitting and there was this other venerable sitting in front of me <laughs> this is a bit embarrassing for me uh. yeah. so during that time <laughs> uh, I, was, I was having a bit of uh, you know don't, don't think that a lot of monks all go to the mountains, stay together, then wow, you know, pure land. Ah. <laughs> one, one senior monk ever told me, ever tell me before, he said, You may be surprised, but you must know who are those who come to the monastery to become monks and nuns? Unenlightened beings, ah. enlightened beings don't have to, don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> So unenlightened beings from all over the place, all of different background, different upbringing, they are bound to have friction. That's why they have, we have 200 over rules. Uh. <laughs> because even in the Buddha's time, they come from different places, everybody have their own thinking, own way of doing things. So uh, a huge part of the rules is about how the Sangha live together. So long story short, I was having a bit of... Uh, uh, gripe with this senior monk. So that, that night, I oh, was sitting, sitting, then towards the, the end, I extended the seat, and then, I tell you, uh, when your mind, when you don't have the Dharma in your mind, you can have unhappiness even when you are in the mountain, sitting, in a very serene hall and nobody disturbing you simply because that variable is sitting in front wow then in my mind you know the our default mind uh, come up with all kinds of funny things you know, that was and then in my mind I was like huh, just when I want to sit extended you also want to sit <laughs> Huh? The kind of crazy thoughts that come to our mind. Of course, after hearing this, you may think, Ayo, how come this is full like that one? But what to do? Huh? If, you are, if you have better merit, then you find an enlightened, like Arahan, like the Venerable Sariputra. <laughs> I'm not. Huh? So in case if you're looking for a Venerable Sariputra, you have to find someone else. <laughs> but anyway, What's it, what's, what was funny was, so initially I had this thought, then I thought, never mind, I'll just do my own sitting. Then as I said, sit, 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 then uh, in our lineage we do a bit of samatha, yeah? we quieten our mind using the, the mindfulness of breath, then later we, we do contemplation, uh, contemplation on impermanence, on emptiness, on no self, you know, different aspects. And that night I happened to contemplate on impermanence. And towards the end, it became so stuck. The moment we finish, and I heard him shuffle. Oh, I, I <laughs> without a second thought, I jumped out of my chair, went down on my knees, and repented to, to this senior monk. <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 in my mind, it was crystal clear that, yeah, if I don't repent to him, who knows? Yeah, will I have a chance to, to 
to to to make peace with him. The trouble is usually usually when we sit down people ask us do you have eternalist view? Do you think you'll live forever? Do you think it, you are permanent? We say no, of course not. But check our own body, speech and mind. Check the way we act, the way we speak, the way we think. And uh, then you, you, you have the answer. Not not for Sifu to, to, to decide for you or to do assessment of you. Uh, that that's your own uh, your own action. Okay? Uh, but so this is this is something very direct. Yeah. Uh, and if we were to do this reflection, it can help us to look at sickness, death, and even aging um, without that surprise, that shock, without that, huh? You know? It doesn't mean that just because you face it, it doesn't happen. Uh. No. It just means that when it does happen, it's not a surprise. When it does happen, you are expecting it because you know that that is the fact of life. Yeah. We're not we're not psychoing ourselves about something that doesn't happen. We are just bringing the awareness of something that does happen. No. And if we can face it uh, calmly. Many times our response to a, to some extent not just mental, emotional but also bodily response may be better. Yeah. Uh, I read an article that in Bhutan uh, this is something that not just the monastics do, that it is part of their culture. Yeah. Bhutan is a Buddhist country yeah, or a, a very Buddhist country. So they, it's part of their culture to reflect on death. Yeah. I will share an article later about that, or maybe you can find that also. Mm. So to me, this is the easy part for ourselves. The tricky part is, one, dealing with the, the sickness and death of others. But if you can fix the first part for ourselves, that means, facing our own sickness, facing our own death, then I think it will be that much easier to face others. But the even tougher part is how to help our loved ones learn this. Hmm. Not so easy. Uh. Uh, there was once in the interfaith dialogue in Gelang Sarai, I, I was invited to share so I had a series of slides and in one of the slide I was sharing on the first noble truth so I asked I, I didn't present it like as a as a Dharma talk teaching people about the truth but I, I rephrased it as a series of questions and I asked the audience the audience consists of the of the uh, advisor, uh, consists of the grassroots leaders, consists of the various religious leaders from various faith, consists of the, the, the members who, who were there. So we have, we have uh, participants from who are Buddhists, who are Taoists, who are Christians, who are Muslims, who are Sikh, Sikhs and you know, all the various faith. So I asked them this series of questions. Uh, I asked them, uh, do you all want to fall sick? And you know, initially they were a bit like, what kind of question is that? You know, then I said, no, no, very simply, you know, you all need to respond otherwise, you know, uh, my, my thought is always, you know, asking people to have, give input. So they all said, no, no, nobody wants to fall sick. And of course, we're not talking about getting MC. Uh. Getting MC doesn't mean you're sick. <laughs> I mean, sadly, in Singapore, that's the case. Uh. Uh, I didn't know until much later that, oh, that, you know, play MC and stuff like that. 
so um, I asked them do you, do you all want to fall sick? no, they don't want do you all want to grow old? you know, with the faculties dull and everything? no, they don't want do you all want to die? when everything is going well? no, nobody wants I said uh, do you not want to get what you want? you know, that question itself is you know or the, actually the, the next question is do you want to be separated from your loved ones or do you want to come in contact with unpleasant ones things or people that you don't like situations, circumstances so no, do one. and then I ask them but despite not wanting them sometimes it at, at times it happens, isn't it? when, when there are conditions, it happens, isn't it? they say yes and when it happens, are you happy? no, all of them all of them, regardless of their faith, language or religion they all said, no and then I asked them, so and the reason is because this applies to everyone regardless of whether you are young or old you are man or woman they said, yes regardless of your race, language or religion <laughs> yes or for that matter, even nationality they said, yes and the reason is because this is the, this is the fact, this is the truth of our human experience. Is that yes? That when all these things happen, you suffer. I said yes. Then go to the next slide, and the next slide is basically that that same set of questions. I overlay the truth of suffering, <laughs> and I. And then they were like, they looked shocked. Then I told them, that's why the Buddha's teaching is called the truth. Yeah, this is the first noble truth of suffering. <laughs> so, some of them must be like, huh? How did we get caught into <laughs> agreeing with the Buddha's teaching? No con, nah, no con. This, this is the truth, right? This is the teaching, right? Of the Buddha. The Buddha wasn't teaching about something special out there. He, he just observed reality of life and he, he, he the difference is that he drew some conclusion that others didn't draw you know and so after the talk during the reception some of them came up to me and asked me like you mean this is what the, the Buddha taught? this is what Buddhist you know the Buddhist teaching them? And I'm like yeah that's, that's right and then they were like then what are we disagreeing about? <laughs> I'm like yeah I don't know <laughs> So the, the question about how to share this with those who are not Buddhist or do not know the Dharma The thing is, um, sometimes we have a misconception about what is Dharma The word Dharma, uh, generally we, we say So first of all, Dharma is not an English word, it's an a Indian, Indian word yeah, Sanskrit Pali, the way we, we learn it in Buddhism so there are three general meanings. The first one is all phenomena. Yeah, so referring to all things. Right? Second meaning is that all these things are supported, are defined by something. Yeah? And I would call it the, the principle or the structure. Yeah? So that's the second meaning. And the third meaning is that um, among all the principles and structure that define this whole world, all the things in the world there are those that give rise to wholesomeness give rise to goodness yeah? and that is what we call Buddha Dharma yeah? the part of the Dharma that the Buddha teach that can help us to, to give rise to wholesomeness yeah? lead us from suffering to no suffering so um, in which case then Dharma is not some special Buddhist thing the Dharma is actually the Buddha Dharma that the Buddha teach is what he observed and discovered um, not what he created but he observed a certain pattern yeah? patterns about life yeah? old age is a pattern that from young to old this is a pattern that so far still still exists yeah? 
from good health to ill to sickness that is a pattern birth and death that's a that there's a you know these are linked that's a pattern and so he observed all these patterns and make sense of it and so if you if you if you think about it to for someone who is not a buddhist or do not know the dharma first of all who doesn't know about impermanence who doesn't know that uh, attachment leads to suffering no no to be fair uh, some of the parts you need some life experiences some of the parts need you to sit down and reflect yeah but that's the the, the part about uh, old age sickness and death I think this is quite apparent the trouble is we usually don't go and think about it so in a way um, the trouble I or the, the challenge and difficulty I see for some some non Buddhists uh, in in learning this is perhaps the the stigma the stigma that oh because this is Buddhist teaching this is Dharma so I'm not Buddhist so cannot learn uh, I don't know I don't know whether there are any religion that outrightly say cannot uh, there may be some okay uh, okay to be fair I, I kind of I think there are some but I think um, increasingly more and more religious teachers are, are starting to see that you know the label itself may not be so meaningful you know, to get stuck in that and, and um, as a result of the label then cannot use that, that kind of reminds me of the you know Apple fanboy and the Android fanboy <laughs> or Windows fanboy and Apple fanboy yeah those who like Apple anything that is not Apple cannot those who like Windows anything that is not Windows cannot those who like Android anything that is not Android cannot <laughs> I'm not saying it's wrong but I think at some point in your life you start to realize that all you want to do is use your phone who cares what operating system it is and if your concern is how to face old age, sickness and death why, do you, why are you concerned about how, where this teaching comes from? Yeah, and for that matter, if you were to relate to them the way I, I mentioned there's nothing so specifically Buddhist about it in a sense no? so I think it should be okay I hope it's okay because I do, I do know of uh, various students who are actually uh, not Buddhist by birth or by culture um, I've been teaching at uh, ESSEC French Business School I just had a class with them uh, last week last week or last last week uh, a good number of them show keen interest in it they're, they're, they, they don't have the culture of exposure to Buddhism uh, for most of them, they are culturally Christians, some by faith, some by culture. Um, and, and some of them ask me, like, you know, is it okay to learn? You know, I'm like, no problem. And one of the things I highlighted to them was in Buddhism, there's no, uh, there's, there's no such a notion of trying to convert people to become Buddhists. Yeah, we, we don't have this notion. In the Buddha's time, the Buddha himself uh, outrightly told people that they should not think that the Buddha teach to make them their disciple. Because, like it or not, um, whenever people come and talk to him, uh, sometimes even to challenge him, they become convinced that he, the Buddha, is speaking the truth. And so then they, they, they think for themselves like, eh, no link. I thought, I thought he is actually, you know, wayward. But when I talk to him, he seems to make sense. The Buddha. I, I think I should learn from him instead. <laughs> and this is what happened. But even then, he he, he cautioned people. He, he 
because his interest in teaching is not to make them Buddhist, make them their disciple. That is not the interest of the Buddha. The purpose of teaching the Dharma is to help people be free of suffering. You know? Yeah, so um, if we can get that across, then people may be more open to learning about the, the reality of our life. So sickness and death happens to everyone. How do we get prepared for losses too? Mm. Yeah, so if we can do the reflection on ourselves, then by extension we should reflect and remind ourselves similarly our parents, our loved ones, our wife, our husbands, our children even. Statistically, you know, they, we, we say that um, usually the parents will pass away first. But you never know. And in fact, I have, I have students who, who had to send their children off. Yeah. So, uh, doing this reflection can help. Oh. So, the next question. Uh, I wish to understand more about... Okay, I'm going to just put a like whenever I reply to the question so that I know they are covered. I wish to understand more about Sankara Singh. Oh, Sankara are impermanent and the mind is permanent. Huh? No, the mind is not permanent also. So Sankara Singh uh, is also translated as formations, uh, formations or fabrications. So it refers to all uh, conditioned phenomena all things that are conditioned meaning that it requires constituent parts to come together to form a resultant phenomenon now that is what is meant by a conditioned phenomenon or sankara uh, but the word sankara used in different contexts the scope can be different uh, like when we say zu xing wu chang then it refers to all conditioned phenomena but when we say uh, like so uh, xiang xing shi, yeah, as the fourth aggregate, yeah, se so xiang xing shi, the fourth aggregate, then it refers only to the mental formations, in particular, uh, apart from feelings, perception, and consciousness, yeah, so, uh. And in certain suttas, it refers specifically to volition formation. Uh, volition formation. Uh, so that would be what we call the technical term for that would be si. Yeah. So si xing shuo. Yeah. Or maybe we can say qi xing dong nian in some extent. Uh, if you look at the Abhidhamma, then uh, a whole set of mental concomitants all fall under this. Uh, mental formations so mind itself no not permanent uh, uh, question from Lei Hua yeah. mind itself is not permanent in fact in the Satipatthana in one of the there is the Guang as the uh, what is that Zhong um, Guan and Bie Guan in Bie Guan that means the Distinctive contemplation, then we say, Guan Sen Bu Jing, Guan Shou Si Ku, Guan Xing Wu Chang, Guan Fa Wu. Oh, so, Guan Xing Wu Chang. <laughs> so, the Buddha's uh, instruction on the Satipatthana, uh, for all, the, all of them, there are general contemplation, but for each of them, Sen Shou Xing Fa, body, feelings, mental, uh, mind, and mental object, there are uh, unique, uh, distinctive contemplation to be done for each of them. So in the case of mind, it was to contemplate that the mind is empty. Oh. Uh, so uh, you can we can do this contemplation also. In fact, when we meditate, thoughts arise and then cease, thought arise and cease. Yeah, to observe. We may think, no, what, Sifu, when I sit, uh, my thoughts are constant. Thoughts, thoughts by definition cannot be constant. Uh. Because 
if thought is, con is constant, that means you just have one thought and it's that one thought throughout. Yeah, I cannot imagine how that happens. Uh. Just one thought. Tung. <laughs> Usually it's a sequence of thoughts, a train of thoughts, right? So the fact that there's a train of thoughts, that means it's different thoughts in a sequence. The fact that there's a sequence of different thoughts or a train of different thoughts, that means it's impermanent, it has changed. No? Uh, in, and in the Buddhist tradition, emotions is often described as part of mind. Yeah, but in modern times, we tend to separate emotions apart from mind, where mind is more the cognitive, the thinking part the planning and all those things. The emotions is separate. I'm not here to say which is correct, but it shows how in different times, uh, we look at the mind, emotions, our very existence differently. Oh. Nowadays, uh, there's a lot more vocabulary, there's a lot more emphasis on emotions. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, the same principle can still be applied to consider how emotions are dependent arising. They are depending on conditions to arise and they are also impermanent. Mm. So let me see, other questions? Oh, that's it, no more questions. Uh, Ushnisha, welcome. Um, mm. Oh, just nice, three o'clock. Soon, <laughs> soon. Okay, let me see. What is this up next? Oh. So I hope uh, Lei Hua, Le, is it, was it Lei Hua who asked the question? Oh, Kim explained. Sorry, Sifu, sorry. Could it be that Sis Lei Hua is referring to the true nature of mind, which some people refer to it as the pure mind, because it is beyond birth and death, so unchanging? Sifu, there are earlier questions. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to see the earlier questions, uh, but I can't seem to see it. Why, uh? Uh, so let me let me respond to Kim first. Uh, the true nature of mind. Uh, true nature of mind is not mind, ma. It's the nature of mind. Um, but nature of mind is not something separate from mind. Uh. Yeah. So um, I know that in the in the I think it's the Wu Lai Zhang uh, or in the Chinese later Chinese tradition, there's this huge emphasis on zhen chang wei xing, mm. and at that stage, then it seemed to perceive that as permanent. Yeah. Uh, it'd be it'd be similar to asking the question. Uh, all things, uh, all fabrications are impermanent. But how about impermanence? Is impermanence permanent? In a way, if uh, if Le Hua's question is referring to the true nature of mind, uh, then that that question becomes: Is impermanence permanent? Yeah, because the true nature of mind is. Wu Chang Ku Kong Wu. Yeah, that's that's the ultimate nature, ultimate reality of all phenomena. Ma. So the true nature cannot be apart from the ultimate reality, ma. <laughs> yeah. And if we then say that the true nature of mind is permanent, then that's saying that impermanence is permanent. But impermanence is not something separate from. Uh, mind. So there's no permanent or impermanence to talk about as far as impermanence is concerned. It's a feature of it, it's a principle. 
Mm. So when we say principle, then there is the principle itself and the description of the principle. The description is impermanent. The principle itself, we can say it's timeless. Many times when we say it's timeless, then we, we assume that it's permanent. Rather, it is neither permanent nor impermanent. Yeah. Another angle I want to bring in for this line of question is uh, the purpose of the Dharma. I mentioned earlier, the purpose is to help us understand the nature and then free ourselves from suffering, right? Uh, so we can ask ourselves, are we attached to impermanence? If you are attached to impermanence, then you must go and contemplate on the impermanence or impermanence <laughs> or the insubstantiality of it or something. Yeah, but we are we're not I don't think we are suffering in that way. Uh. We seem more like we are suffering over our grasping of things to be either permanent or impermanent the way we want it to be. So, Jean asked another question, how about the existence of mind? Is it permanent? Uh, mind changes from moment to moment. So, how can it be permanent? When we say existence of mind, uh, that's like saying, yeah, it's impermanent, but from birth until now, there's mind. Ma. So it should be permanent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, go and you go and observe the mind, see whether it's permanent. Yeah, it's, it's still impermanent. Uh, Alex asks Does chanting Ratana Sutta help? What can we learn from it other than asking gods for help? Ratana Sutta uh, uh, I don't quite recall Ratana Sutta uh, asking gods for help uh. um, mm. but uh, chanting Ratana Sutta does it help? Uh, Alex, not too sure what you mean by help as in help with coping with impermanence and uh, aging, sickness and death or what? Yeah, maybe you can elaborate then I can answer Okay uh, Kim Ong and Le Hua I, I don't know whether I answer your question earlier uh, my elaboration on the the zhen chang wei xing and how the nature of our mind is should be in line with ultimate reality oh. and then Valerie you mentioned that there are earlier questions maybe uh, let me try to refresh the page huh? oh, okay one of the live audience passed me okay oh this is a new question yeah not the that Valerie asked about earlier questions, so it's much earlier. Uh, yellow. So, so I refresh to try to see. I don't know whether uh, I'm missing anything. Oh, okay. Gek Yong asked, how do we know or measure if we are making progress on our meditation? Uh, well, this question requires... Uh, <laughs> A meditation class. Uh, how do we measure? So, uh, if we go by the Buddhist uh, Buddhist path, then we can say um, when we uh, we can measure by saying uh, when we are doing our sitting, how quiet is our mind that's one uh, how how drowsy is our mind 
how calm is our mind and so on but that's how we usually look at it uh. another way is how correct is our assessment that means do we have right knowing that means if our mind is calm do we know that it's calm when our mind is uh, agitated do we know that it's agitated when our mind is distracted do we know it's distracted when our mind is uh, uh, discursive do we know it that it's discursive uh, even when our mind is drowsy do we know it's drowsy uh, if we know that is progress uh, but then we can also measure against the development of concentration yeah so then we can ask ourselves uh, are we able to quieten the mind and be able to experience the 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 bliss or the quietude yeah, leading to jhana uh, that's another angle no? uh, beyond that Buddhist meditation is not just on the samatha, the quietening part there's also the wisdom part yeah, so uh, if we bring that in then we have to do the vipassana part which in the, in the tradition I was training there's the contemplation part and then there's the insight part yeah, which must eventually translate to a change in our mindset so how do we measure? Measure by how we uh, have a change in our mindset. <clears throat> okay, uh, so I hope I answered that question from Gate Yong. Uh, uh, Linda Bo, hello Sifu, we are Jin's friend, we are joining from Bangkok. Welcome aboard, <laughs> good to uh, see you all online. Don asks, Hi Shifu, can I ask you a question? Every morning I was doing morning class to Song Jing Gang Jing, but I need time to understand to know more about the content, explanation of the content. I am interested to read book, but as what I know might be few books published and there is few authors. But I'm not I'm not sure which one is the correct book to buy, which author. Uh, so uh, about this question, the uh, after this, the next se session is on Diamond Sutra. Uh, so you can just join. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've also shared the link last week. So you don't have to wait for the weekly. You can read on your own also. And then attend the, the live uh, session to, to you know, have more clarity. So that's one option. Uh, I know that, uh, so my teacher has a few series of talks on Diamond Sutra uh, that he covered the whole sutra in different uh, years. There's also Ying Sun Tao Shi, uh, Master Ying Sun, he has the, inside the, if I, I yeah, in Miao Yin Si, there should be one on the Diamond Sutra. Mm. Then Valerie asks, my question is, given the current situation, Many people are staying home. Many of us are used to going about our daily lives outside. So it can be frustrating and restless to stay at home, resulting in conflicts at home. <laughs> what advice can you give us to manage the restlessness and frustration and to live harmoniously at home? Thank you, Sifu. This is from Valerie. Ah, you know, a few, I think last week I saw someone post. For once, so, so it's a Facebook post and it says for once all you have to do is stay at home watch television and you can save the world <laughs> you know that all you have to do to save the world is stay at home and watch TV so I replied stay at home checked watch TV I got to work on it <laughs> Uh, yeah, f I I <laughs> for for me, uh, for me personally, first of all, uh, it's it's actually very easy, yeah, not to go out, because for the past um, how long, for the past seventeen eighteen years, unless I'm invited out for lunch gather lunch offering. I'm invited out to give talks, to do hospital visits, to do home visits, to do a memorial service. Um, otherwise, 
I would just stay in the monastery or stay wherever I'm staying. I, I just don't go out. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> that's not an advice. Uh. <laughs> that's just, well, if you can do it, you can do it. But, um, I understand the frustration, and especially when, if you are staying with your family, uh, what I observed over the years is, you know one thing about family? Family members uh, like to sabo each other. <laughs> you know why sabo each other? I, I, if I don't use it correctly, please forgive me. From what I've learned, sabo means to disturb, something like that. Yeah. So, family members have a tendency to go and chop chop disturb each other a bit. Yeah. So, I'm not going to advise you on how to change your family members because the hardest thing to change is others the easiest thing to change is ourselves so one thing we can do is get used to it but getting used to it takes time yeah so get used to staying at home get used to not getting to go out You see, this is this the modern idea of freedom. Freedom to do what we want to do, to say what we want to say. That is freedom, of course. Nothing wrong with that freedom. But, uh, that kind of freedom can also cause us suffering. If you don't know how to relate to that kind of freedom. We become frustrated when we have this idea that, oh, I must have that freedom. You choose oh, either be free or die. Be free or get infected. And worst thing, get others infected. Yeah, so where possible, minimize la. Minimize. Yeah. And and moving forward, if it worsens, then we may have to really do a full lockdown. Yeah, so how? Um my the first part I, I don't have to say is an advice. I would say suggestion, try it out. Uh, work on yourself first uh, uh, unfortunately this is an advice that I, I've been giving in classes over the years that once a week we should learn to spend some quiet time by ourselves I remember the first time I gave this uh, exercise was at uh, SBM Singapore Buddhist Mission Yeah, because the uh, at that point in time, I don't know about now, those who attend the Sunday talk uh, in the afternoon, they, uh, hey, was it afternoon or morning? But they, they happen to be of a certain age, 50 plus, 60 or even 70s. Yeah, so my advice to them was to every week, at least spend some time by yourself. Learn to be okay by yourself learn to be happy by yourself without in you know interacting with others unfortunately most of us we spend our life engaged with others and we are so used to it we are not aware of this need this i don't call it desire as though it's a bad thing uh. um, good or bad i don't know but we have this need that i know and as long as you are so used to this then suddenly you take that away, oh, we cannot take it. And to me, that is the reason why we get that frustration. <clears throat> I wish I, I had highlighted more on that and more people try it out. If you had tried it out over the past few years when you, you hear about it, whether from me or others, it doesn't have to be from me, then by, by now you'll be like, yeah, no problem, I'm, I'm used to it. I'm, um, I'm able to be by myself and be okay. It is not about being antisocial. <laughs> being okay with it to be by yourself is not being antisocial. It just means that you are you are comfortable with yourself. Yeah. The, the first level is you don't have to just sit there and do nothing. Uh. You can read a book, you can ask yourself, if I have one hour to myself, what do I want to do with my life? You know? that doesn't involve people around me. <laughs> Should 
surely we, we can find something right yeah you 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 ask small kids okay i don't know about all small kids but when i was a kid i was able to entertain myself very well yeah but if we forget and then we get so used to it uh, again used to it because for a long term for a long time you are used to it so suddenly not used to it so need time to get used to it let me try to go back again because when I start playing the video the the thing start to scroll up. so I need to scroll back um, yeah so because this question itself I may want to touch on it a bit more next week because it's quite broad uh, so let me count Serene Chu has another question uh, and then Lei Hua's question I've answered then okay I've answered this okay yeah okay so uh, okay so Li Hui clarifies yeah, because when you recite the Ratana Sutta as the uh, utterance of truth of the triple gem yeah it's not really asking the deva for asking the the devas for help huh? uh, okay i think we have covered uh, most of the questions except for the question from serene uh, but we are running over time <laughs> Uh, so let me see Serene Chu uh, if I could get a okay from you uh, your question is we have hit knowledge of Anicca how to handle it behave as a Buddhist or practice when we are face to face with it while it is happening at the moment in time yeah I like to bring this uh, for for discussion next week would it be okay Serene because I'm I've already overrun time and the diamonds to try have to start soon also otherwise you'll just push everything back so um, if I can uh, get an okay from Serene then uh, I will just go on. we'll just wrap up and do dedication oh, uh, I'm gonna just put a heart there so I know that this one has to be or maybe I'll just uh, put a reply We'll cover this next week. Mm. Okay. Well, so I hope today's uh, sharing has been helpful. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, mm. The. I, I just want to wrap up um, to also highlight that. Uh, one of the reasons why we move SGC online is uh, there's been uh, several students who share with me this thought and it's about how with the closure of many temples and in the face of this, uh, this, this uh, pandemic uh, all the more you know, there's a need for Dharma in our life yeah, so the, the aim of putting it online is so that uh, whoever need the Dharma and want to uh, you know learn Dharma can can have ex have easy access to it yeah so I hope to that end uh, this has been helpful uh, please continue to post your questions and if you are watching this after the session has gone live and after the session has ended you can still post comments, I will still see it in my notification and I will uh, note, take note of it and then reply uh, next week uh, in, in the session oh. yeah. Angeline Tong says cause you know my Sifu on ENX what is ENX? Yeah. 
Oh, so we will wrap up here. Mm. Uh, keep safe. Yeah, take care of yourself, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Yuan Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao. Yuan Da Zhi Hui Zhen Ming Liao. Pu Yuan Zhui Zhang Xi Xiao Chu. Shi Shi Chang Xing Fu Sha Dao. Amitabha. Chi Li.